Okay, I'm here with Sid Part 2 and I'm Mag Part 2541 and we're here to talk about the Aussie movie Ned Kelly. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy this movie every time I watch it. I love the cast and I love the story but I'm mainly here to get Sid Part 2's views on the movie so uh, the floor is yours, mate. Um, I enjoyed it to a certain extent. Um, there are a couple things that, like, threw me a little bit here and there. The thing is, I think I need to make sure my dad watches this movie. Because um, here's the thing. I'm actually half Irish on my father's side. And that was not, like, that's part of the, one of the things that confused me, which is what I'll get into in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'm half Irish on my father's side, and he also loves Westerns. And this is very Western-ish. Um, you know, it's even got, you know, them riding into a western-looking town, uh, during sun-up and stuff like that. Uh, it's got, it's got the horses, and there's just a lot to it that, that's very, very reminiscent of those Old West, uh, films. Um, though this isn't a spaghetti western, this is an Aussie western, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I, I enjoyed it overall, it's just... I, I enjoyed it from an objective sense. I didn't. It didn't really do anything for me personally. Uh, I thought it was okay. It's just not my kind of movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you understood this. You know, this is based on a true story, don't you? I got that about halfway through. Um, yeah. I, I couldn't, like, there wasn't anything, or I, I might have missed it, uh, because I was a little distracted when I first started watching it, just in the intro credits. Um, was there anything that said based on true story at the beginning of the movie? No, no, I don't think there is. I think uh, it being released first in Australia, and mainly that's where its success was going to come from, uh, they didn't bother yeah, saying anything. fair enough. Uh, um... I don't know, it's just, if usually you'd get that no matter what. I mean, even with, uh, like, films about, you know, The Doors, they put based on a true story. Everyone knew who The Doors were when that film came out. Um, but, I don't know, that, that would have been helpful, and it's, it's not like it's a lot of editing. It's a black screen and based on a true story. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, I enjoyed it. I, you know, Heath Ledger is amazing in it. No no denying that. And Orlando Bloom was pretty good as well. I didn't know too many of the other people, though. Like, the the head constable or whatever of the police. What else has he been in? Uh, the... Uh, Jeffrey Rush's character, or the... Or the uh, guy that... Uh, the guy that they bring in about halfway through the movie. Uh, Jeffrey Rush. Uh, that would definitely... He was in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's probably the most uh, thing that he's most famous for. He was in Shine. Uh, that was the movie that made him, I guess you would say. Okay, wait. Um, who is he in Pirates, then? Captain Barbosa. Oh, okay, yeah, that's why I rec Like, I could... I swear I could recognize him, it's just I couldn't quite place him. Because I obviously haven't seen enough of his stuff. But yeah, he was great in it as well. I really, um, for the few scenes he had, he did a really good job, especially of emoting just physically, because he didn't have a ton of lines. Um, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. There were a couple things where I knew they were trying to establish that there's this really unfair dynamic and stuff, but I'm like, okay, this escalated way too fast. Um, like the very, like I think I guess you'd call it the second scene in the movie where he rides into town on the white horse, which, you know, stunning metaphor there. Um, he rides into town on the white horse and the cop immediately, like, throws him off of it. And I have no doubt in my mind that, you know, something similar to those events actually happened. It's just of how quickly it developed. It, was, it went from, I ran into town to, I almost got shot very fast. <laughs> so I was a little uh, surprised by that. I actually believe that that is mo I'm actually surprised. Every time I study something about this film, 
I'm like, oh, that that actually did happen, J- uh, just maybe not in those circumstances. But uh, yeah, actually, that did ha- happen. I just don't think he had the um, girl on the back of the horse at the time. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna. If it's a biopic or a very, or at least a loose biopic, I'm not gonna deny that he got arrested for stealing a horse that he claimed he didn't steal. That part I'm, I'm fine with. Um, my thing is, it's just the the way it was portrayed in the film seemed to have happened much faster than any other normal situation. And yeah. I guess I I don't know a ton about. Um, like, my, my knowledge of Irish immigrants comes from my knowledge of Irish immigrants in America, so I'm not going to assume they were treated much better in Australia, um, but it's just the way it happened was so fast, it was a little, um, it was a little just jarring, let me put it that way. And I, I guess it was supposed to be, but it just, it just kind of threw me a little bit. Yeah, um... I'm not sure how, how quickly that situation did escalate, but uh, that is definitely based on true events. But uh, you, I think you're right. It probably escalated a little bit slower than what it actually did. But no, because I mean, like, seriously, he rides it on the horse, and the guy's like, you stole that horse. No, I didn't. You stole the horse! I'm going to rip you down! It's like, it just, like, shit, mm. guy, dude, calm down. Mm. for like two seconds. Um... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I gotta say though, you, you have to remember this is from a different time, so, and the situation, uh, is, very, very, would be very different there, uh, because you, you had, the police were putting their lives on the line, like literally every, every day back then, and, uh, I gotta admit, the, the way we treated some, some of the people out here, uh, especially those that came from convicts, was probably not that well by the the police at the time. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying it was entirely all the, all the police's fault, but, you know, uh, again, I'd just say it's a, it was a different time, you know, and it's... Oh, and, and I'm not judging it for that. It's just that the... It's... I'm talking about the film, not the history, is the thing. Um... I know they wanted to establish really early on that the police here aren't fair and that they don't listen to, you know, both sides of the story in, in a legitimate way. And that's something I'm not going to deny was mo- most likely the case. Um, nine times out of ten, that would have been the case. But at the same time, as this isn't an old film, this is what, 98? No, 2003. Oh, okay, yeah, 2003 then. Um, this isn't an old film, and it's in other times it's paced like a very modern film, but the way that's set up, it feels like something oh. that was okay. an old film canon, you know, just like that. It, it feels very uh, out of place um, as far as, you know, modern character development and stuff like that. It worked, though. I mean, I didn't question it for long. It just kind of threw me really quickly. Um, yeah. I think that's my, maybe kind of what it was supposed to do, but yeah. anyway. Uh, the yeah. other thing, like I, I mentioned I was a little confused at one point because everyone's speaking in these Irish accents. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is an Australian film, but it's set in Ireland. And then suddenly you see a kangaroo in one shot, and I'm like, oh, so it is in Australia. Like, it never even occurred to me that they're, like, during the potato famine that people would go to other countries. <laughs> that just didn't hit me at all. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It just is never something I really thought about. And just the way it was set up, it just, it, it, it took me a minute to get there. Uh, that, that was more my fault for being, you know, shockingly ignorant. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> that one just made me laugh. I was like, oh, so it's set in Ireland. Nope, there's a kangaroo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, now, uh, moving on a bit, uh, what did you think when 
you got to the point where they decided where it was the, the, the initial situation with Ned having to go on the run. What did you think of that situation? How he was... It was, it was the, with the police officer and his sister and stuff. Um, see, it seemed like the smart thing to do would have been to go to the police and say, your guy's crazy. Because that's the thing, is they clearly saw in the bar that the dude was hitting on this chick and she didn't want to be hit on, right? And yeah. police is, you know, retaliation for that was we'll steal their horses. And the Ned's retaliation is we'll steal them right the fuck back. Um, and that I liked. So they were, they were square. You know, the cops, even though they got the horses stolen, it didn't feel like the cops were going to do anything about it at that point. Right? Um, right. Or at least if they were, it got edited out or, or something. It, it felt like they were even at that point. The problem was, once this, you know, clearly non-rational person shows up, uh, we get a really awkward situation. And that's, it's the, it's the thing that makes Ned go on the run and stuff. And I don't mind that, especially if it is the real history. Um, the thing that doesn't work for me about it is just the incredible leap in, um, logic and time that that spans in that scene because because you got to go on the run it's back to the guy's house or it's back to not i'm sorry it's back to the police station and the guy says ned kelly shot me but the thing is he clearly didn't get shot mm -hmm. um it, it's there's that leap in logic and then there's this just jarring leap where he's you know hiding out for what feels like a couple hours, and then there's this jarring leap where he's out in the woods for God knows how long before the cops catch up to him. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, the, the, the thing is, this movie gets really good in the second act. I think it really should have started there and told most of what happens in the first act through flashbacks. Mm, that might have worked, but, uh, yeah, uh, Okay, um, now, uh, the, as I said to, uh, Captain Logan when I sent this movie off to him, the love story in this is complete fiction, so, uh, that part of the story is, is fiction. Where Ned was is not entirely known, I don't believe. I, it's pretty much agreed upon that he wasn't there when this incident with, uh, the character of Fitzpatrick, the... Mm -hmm officer, but uh, he was, I do, do believe he was shot, I just don't think uh, it was Ned that did it, and uh, from, from, uh, from a historical perspective, but yeah, you're right, it, it clearly wasn't shot, they, I guess the only thing he could say to justify is, oh no, no, you see it's a, it's a flesh wound, but yeah, they didn't go into that. They yeah, like, that's the thing, is there's no defense. Like, uh, maybe you can help me out on this. What's the court system like, or what was the court system like uh, in that time? Were there, you know, judges, juries, lawyers, stuff like that, or what? That's, uh, yeah, well, i got to say, um, at this time, uh, from, technically speaking, from this period of time, there was no uh, Australian government. It essentially, it was Victoria had their own government, New South Wales had theirs own, and yet Australia wasn't united yet. It was uh, every state had its own thing going on. But uh, yeah, it, it's it would have been essentially oh uh, they would have taken the police officer's word over his, and that's essentially why he runs, because he knows he, he's... Yeah, he's and, and I get true. that part of it, that, like, there's no way he could um, get the police officer's word over his. Um, but the problem is, he clearly could in this circumstance, because the officer is obviously lying, since yeah. he didn't get shot. That, and he goes to the woman, and even in this fictionalized case... He goes to the woman, 
and asks him to testify on his behalf, right? Yeah. And she says, I couldn't because it would shame me. But the thing is, she was in the stable house looking for her riding jacket. She could have yeah. lied about that aspect of it. But yes. No. Oh, well, I was with. Yeah. And uh, but that's, that's my, like the major plot hole in this. And you know, I, it, here's uh, why not every movie needs a romance story because it create because adding a romance story and adding this drama created a gigantic plot hole. Um, yeah. She had just lied about because she's obviously not got a problem with lying. You know, yeah. it's established by her. You know, having an affair. Um, with the stable boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa, hung stable boy. Sorry, producer's yeah. reference. Um, anyway, it's it's clearly established. It, it it it's established that she has no issue with lying. That then she says she won't lie to defend her honor. And fair enough, you know, a woman like that, she can't just say, "Yeah, I was having an affair with him." But there's a reason that they could give that she was with him, and then it puts the officer at, it, you know, it just immediately um, invalidates yeah. everything he says. Uh, yeah, it immediately I immediately no. says that he's lying. So, I mean, any court, any court, no matter how corrupt, no matter how much they'll take the officer's word above the defendant's, it, it, it can't jive with a direct contradiction, especially when the person contradicting the officer is of high society standards. Um, yeah. So adding that love story created a giant plot hole. No, to, to play devil's advocate here for a moment, because I, I completely agree with you. I, I noticed that definitely this time around. Like, hang on, why did not you just say this? Okay. Mm, two possibilities. Either... She's worried that uh, she'll get uh, in trouble by being on... Uh, the story will come out no matter what if once she's on the stand of what really happened. The other thing is, they might be going, well, why does this high society woman care about this Irish immigrant, uh, Irish uh, nobody sort of thing? Why, why would they, she care? I mean... That, Fair and that's that's a better point than the whole coming out on the stand thing, uh, the the you know relation with society and stuff. But at the same time, part of being a member of high society is you know defending your honor, defending your character. Um, mm. So if someone were to say, if he, if you were to say, I didn't do this, and my witness is my employer's wife. Uh, I was helping her look for her jacket in the stables, and they go to her. She wouldn't even, actually, to be honest, this wouldn't even have gone to court at a certain point because they would have gone to her. She's, if she said yes to that, then it probably would have been thrown out instantly at that point. Like, the, the yeah. cops would have been done with it because the cops would have to take her word above their own uh, given social structure in Victorian eras. Um because she's a proper lady. So, yeah. I mean, it's, that's a better point than the other one, but I still think, I think that you should have just not had the love interest at all, because it doesn't do anything. It yeah, can give him this alternative, you know, and you don't need that because he didn't take it, obviously. Um, yeah. I don't know. His character arc was... It, it didn't really help his character arc because we already saw his alternative life of him being a hero. It doesn't, it doesn't help for him to be a hero or a outlaw or a stable boy lover. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, I... I just essentially thought where this... You know, it was kind of unnecessary to have the love story added in there. But I think maybe he learned his love interest in the movie or something. Uh, something. But well, it's what the story they wanted to tell, anyway. Yeah. So he ended up dating Naomi Watts for a while after they filming this, anyway. So. Mm. How nice. Yeah. <laughs> First step. Oh, I'd date Naomi Watts. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on again, 
Now, we kind of did touch on the the, re uh, the rest of this. Um, oh, look, I gotta, oh, I gotta bring bring this up. The letter that he writes, essentially, moment for moment, that is all true. Everything that happened in that scene is is all true. So, what did you think of the letter that he wrote to the premier of Victoria? Oh, the one in the bank. That yeah. was hilarious, and I absolutely adored it. And actually, that's almost where the movie should have started. Yeah. I think, like I was saying, I think this movie is much better in the second act, or gets much better by the second act. Because that's the thing, is I was, while I was watching this, I got about uh, 15, 20 minutes in, and I, like, rolled the mouse around. I know 15 to 20 minutes in, because I rolled the mouse around, and I looked, because I was just like, fuck, how long is this? <laughs> and I looked at that, and I'm like, ah, eh, all right, well, I said I'd do it, so I'll keep watching. And then once they start robbing bikes, it gets significantly more interesting. Yeah. the thing. And you need the backstory to sympathize with this character, but you don't you don't necessarily need it first. I think this, especially when he's doing things like that, like writing that letter and saying everything that's going on, um, especially when he's doing things like that, I think it'd be much better if it if it worked in the stuff that was going on with flashbacks as opposed to um, setting it up before, as opposed to doing it linearly. Um, yeah, but I did love the scene. It was it was a fantastic scene. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, yeah. And there's some good points made in there too. I like the whole you know we don't steal from average people because we're not common thieves thing. That was nice. I like that he yeah. was burning mortgages. I thought that was really cool. That whole you know um, Robin Hood thing was neat. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't actually know that he did that. I I'm surprised. Uh, I'm very surprised with how, how much every time I do some research into this and go, well, that no way that happened. Uh, but yeah, it was like, oh, that that, that did happen. Okay. Hmm. Uh, moving along again, uh, I'm just gonna cut to my favorite part of the movie. Uh, his plan to derail the train. Now. Uh, you got you, you got that plan, and it essentially backfires. Yeah, yeah. and it backfires in a really stupid way. Um, yeah, <laughs> the idea that oh, this backfired because we didn't keep an eye on one of our hostages. You know, like it's. It, I mean, it's obviously the guy that's going to betray you. He's the only one not getting drunk. Why would yeah. you just like? not pay attention to him and let him sneak out and stuff. It, it was just a really dumb contrivance, and if that's what really happened, that was really dumb on their part. Uh, it was either yeah. dumb on the writer's part, or it was dumb on the, yeah. uh, you know, actual person's part. I'm not sure well, which. Uh, yeah, well, look, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, the, uh, I'm not, I'm gonna say, look, the way they shot this, it's obvious he's the one that's gonna betray them, but, uh, they should have done a little bit more to show, okay, the... Yeah, I mean, if, if, if that, that's true, I didn't think about that, it, from that side. Yeah, it, the way they were shooting it, you know, he's the only one not drinking, he's the only one that's, like, annoyed with them. I mean, it's obvious he's gonna be the one to do it in the movie. In real life, maybe not so, but at the same time, in real life, I got an idea. Let's not get our hostages drunk. Let's let's tie up our hostages. How about that? Um, or let's just get our hostages out of the city by, I don't know, releasing the fucking circus animals. Um, yeah, well, there was no real circus. <laughs> well, there wasn't, that. damn it. See, I, uh, like the, I like the lion metaphor. That was a good metaphor. Yeah. Uh, the lion in the cage that can't escape and gets shot because of it, because of it that was brilliant. Um, it's too bad that's not real. Damn it, life! <laughs> Why can't you have more metaphors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh... What? Yeah, I, that... I like the idea of the plan, though. That was a neat idea to just, you know, 
yeah. all the cops are coming to this town on a train. We're going to kill them <laughs> by taking out the train. Well, that's a, that's a hell of a way to do it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, the plan, uh, because right, uh, I watched a documentary on this, now you might notice um, with their armor that they actually wore, uh, they didn't cover their legs, and the reason for that mainly is because where the train was going to go off the rails, it would go down this hill, and they wouldn't need, they, the police wouldn't be able to get, a, a sh if they managed to get armed and shoot back, they wouldn't have been able to hit them in the in the legs. Mm. So that's that's the, that reason. That's uh, logic for, the, for that. But uh, what do you think when you saw the uh, Kelly gang all in armor? What do you think when, when you saw that? Did you? It seemed a little like I wasn't sure at that point. That was the point where I was like, "Is this really a true story?" <laughs> or <laughs> Like, it's not impossible, it just seemed like, the armor was way too good for the time. There's, you can't do that. I'm sorry. Um, like, I... Really? I, no, just, like, they, they sat there and they shot at it at point-blank range, all four of them at one time, uh, while, when they were testing it, and nothing bad happened. Like, no holes or anything, like, not even a dent, for that matter. Like, come on, yeah. that, that doesn't exist. What's this made of? Dimondium? <laughs> No, it was, it was a little much. Uh, if it actually, you know, if it was the real history that they're wearing armor, that's fine. But I mean, they should have gotten pierced with the armor uh, when they were testing it and stuff. Um, I don't know. Like, like I said, there, there are parts of this movie, and I think that's just part of the person is this like larger than life figure of, of Ned Kelly and his gang. This it just seems unbelievable. I'm surprised more movies haven't been made of him. Um, well, actually, uh, this that's the the one I've, show, I've showed you is just the latest one. There, actually, the first Australian movie w was based on Ned Kelly. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's a fact. But yeah, uh, fact. Yeah, fact. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was it was cool. Uh, the whole heist gone wrong, or not heist, but the whole plan gone awry thing is always fun. Um, it was a little, you know, I get the police are the bad guys in this movie, and I'm not going to deny that it's in the history. But it was a little much when they go, don't shoot, women and children are leaving. Yeah. And they shoot. And like, okay, they did it once, sure, sure, makes perfect sense. But then the women and children are leaving again through the back, and they do it again. Yeah. <laughs> that in, did, did it literally happen twice? I don't know. The, okay. the, this is where the, the history and... Uh, the official well, actually, record, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's one a, of those things. It's, it's just a little much on that side. Of things like yeah. really, you shot. Like, it was even like, you'll be shot down like dogs if you don't go back into that building that we're shooting at. Really, dude? Really? <laughs> yeah. It was just a little much at a certain point. Um, I was pissed that the monkey got shot. Yeah. How dare you introduce a fictional circus and then shoot the fucking monkey? What's your problem? Uh, <laughs> I like monkeys. <sighs> so, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Um, now I have to bring uh, this uh, the last little bit uh, where uh, he's getting taken away on the train. Uh, the 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 man with the sash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's clearly, uh, this is where I think uh, it gets it mostly right. you got Ned Kelly on the train, and he's clearly broken, a broken man by this point. And I he, he's, can't believe his failure and everything, and I, I just love that moment at the end. It's like he, it's clear, he, clear to him that he, his life is over at that point. Uh, would you think of the whole story with the, the sash and how he wore that to say 
yeah, I took a life, but I also saved one. He took more than one life. Um, yeah, I know, but not really. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a redemption in any way, uh, because, you know... No, I was The problem is that. it inadvertently sets up the argument... Like it, I, it's, it's one of those things, um, the film Come and See did this. It inadvertently glorifies fathers who leave their children. Um, mm. Just like Come and See inadvertently glorified the Nazis, which is really hard to do, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's like the, the way it sets it up, it leads to the conclusion that if Ned's father hadn't left him, he wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened. So, it's saying, like, you know, it's this old don't leave your kids thing, but at the same time, it's like, eh, it was kind of a good move on that guy's part to leave his family behind so he didn't get wrapped up in all this shit. Um, it's, I don't actually think that he um, left. He died. Oh, did he? Cause it's, yeah, he it's like, I, I swear they were having a conversation where he ran out. Um, no. No, he died. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, no, I just, I I thought I heard him talking about he left the um, the family or he got arrested or something. Yeah. Um, no, he okay. Ignore I'm pretty sure that's said. the way it went. He died, so. <laughs> but I was mainly referring to, well, he saved one life. Uh, he did, uh, it's like he did one good thing with himself before he went down this path, so it's sort of the way I looked at it, but, uh, I was actually surprised to find out that sash actually existed, I thought it was all made up, but... No, I mean, I uh, can believe that, that they, you know, gave the kid a pat on the shoulder kind of thing for doing his good deed, um... I don't know. I, I it worked. It, it was good to see that he's not. That it, the thing that works about it is it shows that he isn't evil. Um, he, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, and I, I like that part of it. But at the same time, I don't think it. I don't think anything that happens in this movie justifies the actions that he does because. He kills a lot of people. He and his gang kill a lot of people. Yes, they're cops, and one of them's, you know, a, a traitor, but still, that doesn't make it okay. Um, yeah. You know, he's like, oh, well, they arrested my mother. Well, if you want your mother out so bad, then go to jail. What are you doing that's so important? You know, oh, you're being Robin Hood. Okay, that does her a hell of a lot of good. Um, you know, it's just it just it, everything he does just makes it worse for his family in this movie is the problem. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, it's not his fault that he's put into this situation, but it's his fault that he stays in this situation. True. Uh, you know, he didn't choose to have to go on the run, but he chose to stay on the run. Uh, when the cops came and were scouring the woods, that was his chance to turn himself in and thus stop yep. all the other shit that went wrong. And that was kind of the point they had, uh, they made in the conversation he had with the one woman. Um, it was like, I'd give it all up to uh, be with you kind of thing. That's, you know, he, he clearly wanted this on some level or at least knew that this was the only thing he really had. Um, he's not selfless, is the thing. This is a very selfish person. Yeah. Mm. I can see that. I can see that. But, uh, again, uh, just to wrap this little up now, because we've gone through essentially the whole movie, uh, was there anything else that you a actually had, uh, hmm, that you enjoyed, uh, that I haven't mentioned? Um, uh, no, I enjoyed the majority of the movie, it's just, um, mostly what I'm talking about is either problems with changing the history, or just 
you know, the character flaws. And that's the thing, yeah. he's a flawed character, it doesn't make it a bad movie. Uh, it's no. well shot, well done. It's just not really my kind of thing. Um, I'm not a huge Western fan, though I am watching Firefly right now. <laughs> so... Yeah. Don't, don't, don't say anything, because that is on my, it's, it's on my quick flicks queue. It's, it's on my pretty quick good. Uh, if you like westerns, or if you like sci-fi, it'll work for you. I, I kind of want to go watch it with my dad. Once I get through it, I think I'm going to try and watch it with my dad. Uh, if, mm. I, if I can get him past Cowboys in space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know, um. It's just not my style of movie. I'm, that doesn't make it bad. There's there's a lot here that's really well done. Um, I think the acting saves the movie from a, lot, a couple of the plot holes or, or just problems in general. Oh, well, this is Australia. It's an Australian film. Uh, we do supply some great actors, and in, in as you will probably know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we we, go, we have Nicole Kidman, even though she wasn't technically born out here, we have Heath Ledger, of course, and uh, a lot of other great actors, really, uh, like Jeffrey Rush is one of them, and yeah, a whole host of... And yeah, one of the things you did, did say was that when I did mention the cast to you, that was a great cast. So. Oh, definitely, and that's... That is probably the strongest part of the film for me. Oh, we didn't really talk about how it was shot. Um, just to briefly get into that. It, it's it got a lot of old western -y kind of shots. It's it's shot, oddly enough, like a war movie. Um, mm. You don't see that a lot, but it's it's got a lot of shots, and, and the color palette is really... Very, very similar to the way war movies are shot, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. That's, that's just worth mentioning. That's something that like I picked up on throughout. Yeah, I did. I did know, notice that when I was watching it again, because I'm not really one of those guys that would know uh, that uh, would know what they did for that. But like, I did love the way that it it, it did have that. Uh, lots of browns and uh, there's a lot green. of grays and blues. Uh, yeah, grays and yeah. dark, dark blues, um, and that helped. Uh, I don't know. I I'm not a huge shot kind of guy when it comes to this film. When it comes to film, but I just noticed that throughout. There are a lot of marching shots. There are a lot of you know drawing the lines. A lot of like scouting shots. It was really shot and, and done as a war movie. And I think that helped it, in a way. Because you get to see, you know, one man's war on the police kind of thing. And that was cool. Yeah. I, I, I did like that sort of tone that they went with it. But, yeah, I just like... I did like the way it was shot. It was... Mm-hmm. But that's what you pay a director and a shooting stuff to do. Shoot, shoot a yep, war well, movie. Now, um, although you, again, as you said, this wasn't uh, one of your star styles of movies that you would normally watch, uh, we, uh, if I recommended another movie for you to, to watch, would you, would you do it again? Oh, definitely. I mean, like, that's the thing is I enjoyed it, just not, not... I enjoyed it, just not on the same level that I enjoy something like, I don't know, The Dark Knight or uh, Lucky Number Eleven. Um, you got any mystery flicks? Any anything with a you know mystery plot? Uh, I haven't got anything in front of me now, but I uh, after I go uh, after we stop recording, I'll I'll look for something more your style, and we'll pick something else out, I was going to say. Okay, cool. Sounds like fun. All right. Uh, but, okay, if you had to give this film a rating out of, say, 10, what would you give it? Well, I got to take at least a uh, point and a half away for the plot hole. Um, yeah. Given that it's a biopic, or, or you know, a based on true story thing, I gotta take another like half point away for the the whole historical inaccuracies. 
Um, especially when you're building metaphors into them and such, uh, with the circus. Um, <laughs> you weren't forgiven for that, were you? <laughs> no, no, it's just like, it's such a big thing. It's like they make a whole point at, out of the fact that he, you know, hijacked a circus. There's a whole <laughs> scene dedicated to it. Um, and then you see the damn lion, and it was one of the best little metaphors in the movie. Um, so, visual metaphors, I should say. Uh, so, probably around like a seven and a half to eight. Um, if you Sorry. like westerns, you'll enjoy it. If you like character stuff, you'll enjoy it. Um, I'm just not a huge character guy. I'm more of an idea guy when it comes to stories. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a good movie. It's just not my, like I said, it's not my, not my thing. Well, uh, even though I probably haven't done the best job of reviewing this, but more reacting to your comments, but I would oh, that's definitely... Fine. That's that's kind of a good... That's a good way to do this, like, first view kind of format, I think. Yeah. I will get... Uh, I'm going to always... I always love this movie. It is in probably my top ten favorite movies of all time, because that uh, it does keep changing. Uh, as, as I imagine it does with you, but I definitely have to give this one uh, a nine because it's probably one of the best Ned Kelly pictures ever to come out. Uh, despite all its flaws, it does still hold up, which I, like, I know it's not that old, but still, it's ten years old now. Uh, look at a bunch of movies from back then and you'll see what I mean uh, with that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. So it's for me. It's got to be a nine. It, it's, well, you're it's, just wrong. That's all. Yeah, no, I'm clear, clearly. I, I, I am totally out of it. But uh, and for me, the it's the cast and um, the and um, and the the emotion I feel when I watch this film overcomes all those flaws that that you mentioned with it. But still, I have to give it that ratings, uh, and plus, it gets a bonus point anyway for being entirely shot out here in Australia. So, <laughs> so I should just shoot my next movie in Australia, and you'll just love it. Um. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you had shot your your uh, movie out here, it, it, instead of getting a five, it would get it. <laughs> it would get it an eight <laughs> or a nine. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is fun, man. I didn't mind doing yeah. this at all. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this yet. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone, and watching if you did. Yep. Okay.